All right, Sarah, is anything off limits? Is there anything you won't joke about? Uh, probably not. I mean, I think a lot of people say, uh, you joke about rape and AIDS and this and everything, but I'm not joking about those things. I, it, I think that's more of a reflection of people reacting to buzzwords and not really listening to the, the content or the context. You know, I'm, I'm almost always the idiot in, in my jokes, and uh, the subject matter just happens to be about dark, dark things. But I guess if there was anything I wouldn't talk about, and I, people ask me that, and I always kind of think, um, and it's so specific, but like fat jokes about women, that always bums me out because um, I feel like we live in a country where fat women at least in white America, don't deserve love, you know? And I, I mm -hmm. don't think that's true for men. You know, you see every sitcom star is like a fat guy with some gorgeous wife, but, but we live in a country that it really feels that way. It feels that it's in the ether, and it, it, that just makes me sad to make a joke of it or to make light of it. It, it's, it tends to be more mean-spirited, you know? I know that sounds so specific, and I wouldn't be down on someone who would make a joke about that, because who would I be? Yeah. But it's just not my cup of tea. I'm going to pay you a good compliment now. I knew uh, Lenny Bruce was a great friend of mine, and Lenny would have loved you. Really? And I mean that. Yeah, he would have. That's a when great you come compliment. Up with, when you come up with a joke, do you, is shock part of it? Are you thinking, I, I, I'm using this, I will be shocking people. I think that it's, um, you know, I talk about it in the book, and it wasn't something I realized until I started doing interviews like this. And, and you know how, like, the biggest revelations are always so simple? So there's a story that, you know, when I was, like, three, my dad taught me swears. You know, he thought it was hilarious to teach a three-year-old swears. So I would shout out these swears in the middle of the supermarket, and I <laughs> saw at three years old this reaction that was shock and delight and it was it felt like approval and it I feel like I got kind of addicted to it it like made my arms itch you know and uh, it makes sense that that would kind of inform my later life and I think that it did but that said I don't sit around going like how can I be shocking because I think that once the formulas figured out it's it's no longer shocking you know yeah. and um, what? so I and I also don't I don't I never am, I just write whatever is funny to me, and I try to stick with that because I think that comedy kind of dies in second-guessing the audience, you know, and that's why what, 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 some people like me you? and some people don't. What to you, or how, what is offensive to you? Um... <laughs> Nothing, Sarah, I, I, right? No, 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 that's not true. I, I, I am offended to, by things. I think people get offended by things that are very specific to their own life experience, you know? So something that might be offensive to me, it comes from something that, an experience that I had, you know? But I think, or, or you know, f something that's funny is so subjective, you know? So if somebody says something that is mean-spirited, that to me isn't funny, isn't more funny than it is mean-spirited, yeah. then I'll probably, won't be, <clears throat> won't be for me, you know. But um, I can't really say blanketly. Is that a word? Blanketly, what offends me. 